Hey guys, welcome back. This is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to another post bag video. So, we've got a total of three items um, this time. They're not really heavy, but this one is the heaviest. So I'm going to start with that one first. Now, it shows... Um, actually, so one times socket weight. It doesn't really show a description. So let's just open it. And take a look. Oh, yeah, I remember. DC jacks. A whole lot of them. I think that there are 50 inside of them. Uh, with a uh, wire insertion detection pin. As I think they are called. So that's nice, because I, I really need them. When, when I have projects and I've uh, I need to connect a DC jack. Uh, the last time I was uh, was needed to connect to a DC jack or was needed to use a DC jack and solder it on a PCB, I um, was still able to use um, one of my dead Ar Arduino's DC jack. But I'm out of dead Arduino's, which is possibly a good thing, I guess, because then I won't burn them. But hey, so I'm out of dead Arduino's now. Um, so that means I'm also out of DC jacks. So yeah, that was a problem that needed to be solved. So on to the next one. This one says adapter connector, adapter connector, two times adapter connector. No, let's see. The two times adapter connector won't really open up. Oh, these two. Yeah. Well. Ah, oh, let's just cut them. Same problem. But I expected them to be the other way around. Not the uh, male part, but the female part. Well, not the... This is... This is the female part, not the female part, but the male part. So these are nice to, to have laying around, but I expected the, um, the other ones where you could actually insert this into a DC jack and then screw in wires, because that would make life so much easier. But hey, that is not what this item is, so a bit of a bummer here and there. But you could use them to connect, for example, a 12 volt battery. You know, that you are able to um, plug a charger into this. So you could charge your batteries. So, yeah. Nice little DC jack uh, thing. And on to the last one. Which shows priority return if underdeliverable. The undeliverable. It doesn't really show uh, what's inside here, so let's just open it. Okay. I'm I'm having struggles to open these bags uh, today, because yeah. Ooh, now this. Oh, this is what I was hoping for for a very long time, and this is going to get interesting. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, here it is, here it is, here it is. Yeah, this is this is really exciting. This is home automation stuff, uh, guys. This is home automation stuff. I wanted a way to measure uh, power consumption of uh, 220 volts AC appliances without um, uh, buying a device uh, or a thing that was in between the AC lines and this device um, as listed on the internet is able to do it as I am trying to get it out of the bag I think the plastic, yeah, the plastic is stuck on the headers on the back side of the headers, there you go so this device is able to do it so what's under here? a few passive components so it's got a microcontroller um, onto it 
And well, let's actually bring out the product page. So it shows AC Digital Multifunctional Meter Amperometer TTO. This. Um, and let's check if there is a connection schematic. No, there isn't, but I know it, it's capable of 22 kilowatts, which is of course could be correct since it doesn't require a um, physical connection between the power lines. So, okay, okay, I'll give them that one. Um, now I'm searching for a um, a uh, model name PZM 004T PZM 004T I missed out oh right off the bat I get a picture of how to um, connect it to an ESP 8266 well, 12E actually. There you go. So, it shows a uh, decoil, uh, of course. And the coil, you know, you run uh, the L wire through here. And you connect the coil. It doesn't really matter how to connect it. Well, which wire goes there or there, you know. So, but it matters that you need to connect the, well, this side of the circuitry is um, attached to the live and neutral. I wasn't really expecting that to be honest. I was expecting it to be completely um, remote, if you will. Stay awake. But it isn't. Now I was expecting to uh, not have to cut power cables in order to measure uh, the current. But looks like I do need to cut some power cables. Well anyway, um, I'm still going to do that. I'm going to actually test it. Well, try to test it. Mm -hmm. Not sure how that's going to end, but um, so yeah, as you can see, the coil, you need to run the live wire through there and connect a load at the other side, uh, connect all the things and all R17, one K, um, how much is it then? Yeah. I suppose it's measured in circuit, but uh, I'm not sure. R17 is measured at. Oh, that's good. That's the, the hassle of silicon wiring of your multimeter, but it does feel good. So, yeah. R17 is measured at about a kilo ohm, which means that this is a 5 volt thing which is okay since are we going to test this for a with a um, Arduino so no ESP not yet actually um, and so yeah let's just grab wires and start connecting it now I found a four pin connector but I'm not sure if this is going oh this is going to it actually fits okay there's some kind of switch attached to it um. let's uh, cut it let's grab my wire stripper and let's strip them nice all at once and let's grab the multimeter back you know it's a multimeter uh, special uh, 
this episode. Because I need to verify <laughs> whether the um, connector is actually working, because it's not a really, uh, really the correct connection type. Silicon on silicon, yeah, that doesn't really go. So. Oh. That is actually working really well. Okay. Interesting. Well, I've only got one, so yeah. Breadboard. So, I will grab my breadboard because I will probably need to reuse this connector. And I don't want to split the wires of the connector, so yeah. Let's get the schematic back. So, this one is. Oh, let's first plug them in. Like that. Now. Oh, the wire coloring matches nicely with the pinout. Because this one is ground, and the bottom one is. Oh, the top one is VDD. As it's mentioned on the daddy sheet. Oh, actually, another picture. Oh, there's one header missing. Well, one header, header plastic. Uh, so, red Kanish wire goes to 5 volts. The black wire goes to ground. Stay awake. Now, this is the RX pin, so it needs to go to the TX. This is the TX pin, so it needs to go to the RX. Now, let me grab a wire that's capable of being opened, because that's mm -hmm. pretty necessary, I guess. Now let's open it. The, not yet. Come on. Uh, oh. Okay. So this is going to be interesting because I need to reroute a few wires into there and so let's cut the wiring shell. Separate them. Come on. One, two, three. Now, again, I was hoping that it would be a. Um, I think it's fair to say touchless. Touchless mod to uh, existing wiring. To be able to measure the current uh, voltage, uh, amperage, and all that kind of stuff. Come on! I don't want to damage anything. Oh, there you go. Ah, nice. So there is a. No, there isn't. So okay. Um, the life needs to go through there, and the life is the brown wire. So we need to disconnect the brown wire. Okay, also remove this. Like that. Since we just can't really cut the loop, the loop, the loop. So run it through the coil. Stay awake, come on, man, come on, stay awake. And twist it. And 
insert it back into the plug now I know I've still got to connect the two wires going through uh, to this board but I'm going to grab some jumper wires for that two to be exact now I'm not sure if it's necessary but I will match the um, pin out with the um, one that's on the diagram you know this one is oh, fuck. Mm. this one is the um, live cable and I'm um, I'm going to match that with the cable that's shown on the diagram. So the life is the one that goes through the coil and it's the one that um, is connected through here. There we go. I'm going to need to increase my Time a little bit, but I'm firstly going to connect my camera to the charger because it's running out of battery. Like that, so cool, cool, cool. Now Connect the other wire to here. And I need to connect this wire to here. So like that. So, reroute these two to also go down there. Not in the way of the screws. Okay. That's one. This one is having a bit of a difficulty, it looks. To get in. Like that. Okay, okay, okay. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't really think of that. So, oh, just bend them down and they'll fit. Screw them back in. So, um, let me grab my safe plug. Engine cord. And you've all seen this one.
I didn't know that this was power triggered. If you remove it, it goes to the off state. And the light is, well, is it actually a light? No, it's not a light. No. Okay, so I hope um, that this thing won't end up in, uh, in flames. Let me find a way to connect it properly. First, shut the power off. And actually, move to this one. that so let's turn it on nothing has exploded that's good nothing's getting warm that was also good so without further ado it's time to program the Arduino so uh, let's disconnect it and let's move to the computer shall we So, vacuum cleaner connected, let's turn it on. And wait for it to update. Ooh, that's good. That's really nice. <laughs> so, I'm not sure. Let me take a look at the vacuum cleaner itself because I think somewhere it I think right there well yeah it's a 700 watt model and it grew around 700 watts actually you know that, that's that's really close that's really close Oh, this is great. So, thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. Make sure to leave a comment down below. You can also share this video with your friends if you think they will like it too. See you next time.